from the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications, your home for complete Marshall University news. You're watching MU Report. Rising prices for EpiPens are leaving some Marshall students in a shock. That's our top story in a moment. Well, in the meantime, good afternoon. I'm Breon Taylor. And I'm Danielle Wright. Welcome to MU Report, our third statewide show of the fall 2016 semester. We're glad you're joining us here on West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Now, as promised, our top story. If you are prone to severe allergic reaction, you might have been prescribed in a medical, medis, medicine auto injector, better known as an EpiPen. As Emily Kennan reports, EpiPen maker Mylan recently sparked outrage among patients when it raised its prices drastically. Dakota Maddox is a graduate student and every morning she wakes up and gets ready for work and class. She packs her notebooks, pencils, textbooks, and one more thing that isn't too common for most college students, her EpiPen. I was prescribed an EpiPen when I was 10 years old after being stung. It was a horrible experience because of how swollen I got and I couldn't breathe. Just like Maddox, many people have learned to depend on their EpiPen throughout the years and are extremely upset about the recent price increase. Pharmaceutical company Mylan sparked outrage among patients by upping the prices by hundreds of dollars. I think that a lot of, or there's a few students here at Marshall that uh, have allergies that use EpiPens. I think that, um, you know, being in college and uh, the amount of money that we have, it's definitely a hardship for them to be able to pay for life-saving medicine like that. In a recent CNBC interview, Mylan CEO Heather Bresch said the EpiPen cost increase is due to the stages between product and consumer. But according to industry insiders, EpiPens cost Mylan no more than $30 for a two-pack of the medication, but some patients are forced to pay over $600. Honestly, if I had to use one, um, I don't think that I could probably afford it being a college student. I don't see any reason why they're, expen they're as expensive as what they are. Mylan CEO Heather Brush's salary has increased over 600% since the price hike of the medication. In 2007, her salary was nearly $2.5 million. Today, it's nearly $19 million. I just think it's extremely selfish and sad. There's a lot of people that need heavy pens and they're trying to price gouge them. Emily Kenner, MU Report. Several other pharmaceutical companies say the crisis is a chance to finally make more affordable EpiPens for those who need them. Another example of finding new ways to improve others' health can be found right here on Marshall's campus. Elena Connor has more on how Marshall and the city of Huntington are taking the next step in helping individuals live healthier lives. You watch what you eat, you exercise, but how fit are you? There's a test for that. We need a test since fitnesses should be a vital sign and it's a measurement of how well your heart works, how well your lung works, and how well your muscles works. Therefore, all those metabolic systems are in operation by one test, but we need a test that's very simple, very easy to do out in the medical community. The Marshall University Science Department and Dr. Shepard have come up with a new way to make testing your fitness that much easier. The step test. I tried it out to test just how simple it is. Steps and a stopwatch are all that's needed. Um, it's great for if you don't have the equipment to do an actual VO2 max test. Um, this is a good predictor of what your VO2 actually is. I also took the VO2 max test. It involves much more intimidating breathing equipment and can take four times as long to complete. VO2 max that uh, you did here in the lab as an example is very complicated. It takes very expensive equipment to do. It uh, takes a lot of personnel with a lot of expertise. There's also some danger involved because it takes one to a maximal exercise. Stepping to the beat is all you have to do in the new test. Like taking the stairs, the step test makes it easy for individuals to make wellness a priority. Elena Connard, MU Report. If the step test sounds like something that you, would interest you, Contact the Exercise Science Department by calling the number on the screen, 304-696-3186. The test is for all participants. For those of you who can't stand hearing the word test anymore this midterm season, even if it's not an exam, Marshall's MedLife wants to help. As Chantel Foster reports, sometimes all it takes is cuddly little animal therapy to relieve big stress. 
MEDLIFE TOOK OVER THE STUDENT CENTER PLAZA IN EFFORTS TO OFFER STRESS RELIEF ACTIVITIES SO STUDENTS COULD SEE BEYOND THE TEXTBOOK TO A TIME WHERE MIDTERMS ARE IN THE PAST. ONE DOLLAR CAN BUY FIVE MINUTES OF KITTEN AND PUPPY THERAPY WHERE ALL DONATIONS WILL GO TO CHARITY. A PHONE AND A LAPTOP JUST CAN'T COMPARE IN COMFORT WHEN UP AGAINST PAWS AND A WAGGING TAIL. I think that just having an animal with you for at least a minute, it's really calming because you can, I mean, you can cuddle with them and you're also giving them love. And a lot of these animals really need someone to give them love every now and then since they're in a shelter most of the day. And um, it makes you feel good and it makes them feel good. So it's warm and fuzzy. <laughs> From writing letters to soldiers, a bake sale, and tie-dyeing shirts, MedLife Week works to give students a whole new view on what it can be like to take a break from studying and being with other college students in the same position. Um, I think it's just a great opportunity to just step away from your computer or your books or anything else that you're stressed about and just get some social interaction and um, get to play with puppies and kittens. That's makes you happy. I know that makes me happy. Sometimes the best way to escape from midterms is through kittens and a good cause. Chantil Foster, MU Report. All donations raised during Midlife Week go to area charities. And students found another way to have fun recently with Marshall's third annual Fest event. The weekend-long music festival offers students a break from studying for recent, recently com completed midterms here on campus now dubbed October's Fest. The concerts were moved from their original home at the amphitheater to the John C. Edwards Stadium after Marshall Athletics took over. Despite questions surrounding Fest, students still took time to enjoy the music and support Fest. Marshall really went out of their way to try and get some good artists this year, so I'm trying to come out here and support Fest, make it a little bigger, you know, it's, good. it's a good thing for the environment, it's a good thing for campus if it have. Marshall says more than 4,000 tickets were sold for this year's event, and we're all waiting to see if Fest returns for a fourth straight year. There was a lot of noise at Fest, but there might be even more noise online. Social media continues to blow up with opinions about the presidential debate. But as Rebecca Turnbull reports, Marshall is tuning into a new way to unite people under a common patriotism. Marshall music students played along to famous American tunes Sunday to promote patriotism with the help of their instruments and the U.S. Navy. The students say the concert with the U.S. Fleet Forces Band has encouraged them to learn from their bandmates' experiences and continue uniting their communities through their passions for music. What better way to promote education um, with what we're doing here than to bring the music students on stage to perform with them? This concert at Smith Recital Hall is only one of nearly 600 performances given by the U.S. Fleet Forces Band annually. Band members say they perform in front of audiences totaling in the millions each year to support the U.S. military and to inspire patriotism in the lives of those citizens that they work to protect. Performing music, it's a unique opportunity to draw in a crowd and to uh, have that platform from which we can speak and talk about the Navy, raise awareness, uh, raise uh, patriotism, uh, you know, uh, pride in the nation. Participants and attendees of the concert believe the patriotic music helped to serve an even greater purpose in light of a divisive election season. The country, it's, it's clearly divided right now. Um, and I think that um, events like this, it's kind of um, just basic what it means to be an American. You can come out and you know the tunes and it doesn't matter whether you're left side, right side, Republican, Democrat. Patriotism is unifying and so if we're here uh, I think uh, it uh, draws a common thread uh, for everybody no matter what time of year and especially right now. The U.S. Fleet Forces Band will continue this initiative to unite the country in times of political polarization in the best way they know how through playing music that all Americans love. Rebecca Turnbull MU report. The band also saluted veterans in the crowd and encouraged attendees to honor those who fought for a country we all share, no matter our political sides. And MU report will be back right after a break. We are Marshall, a proud family and a distinctive, comprehensive university. We are one of West Virginia's oldest public universities. We honor tradition while looking toward the future. We are the foundation of opportunity for students in West Virginia and across the globe. We're committed to student success in the classroom and beyond. We are Marshall, your best decision ever. And welcome back to MU Report. 
Students on college campuses across the nation are fighting for greater awareness of sexual assault. And Marshall students are adding their voices to a cause many say is left too often in the dark. Marshall University students gather to bring awareness of sexual assault and abuse of women and men throughout the college campus. I want the students to know that uh, the, the battle against sexual assault is real and that we are making an impact on our campus uh, in a positive manner by bringing awareness and that will in turn help reduce sexual assault and bystander injury. Students not only focused on women, but men as well when it comes to sexual assault. I think it is something that happens to both genders. I think it's a problem that we need to deal with. Not only do students and faculty want to end sexual assault, but victim blaming as well. I think that victim blaming is a result of lack of understanding and that rather than being defensive and angry, that educating people and bringing awareness uh, is the way to solve the problem. Marshall President Jerome Gilbert was also present at the event and says he is working with his administration to promote zero tolerance for acts of sexual violence on campus. And now, Jake Griffith joins us with a report on Marshall University sports. Thanks, guys. Well, it's been a disappointing start to the season for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Four straight losses for the first time under head coach Doc Holliday and zero wins versus FBS schools has the herd in a precarious position heading into this Saturday's homecoming matchup against Florida Atlantic. Coach Holliday took the podium Tuesday for his weekly press conference to discuss the herd's struggles so far this season. Well, we, we got to play more consistently. You, look at, you take a look at the defense and, you know, for X number of plays, they play extremely well, but there's about a 14 plays in that in that uh, game where we, you gave up well over 200 yards, you know, on particular plays. So it's just like, uh, and you got to become more consistent. On it. I think the biggest thing, on, if you take a look at defensively and offensively, if you just put your finger on one thing, which is hard to do, but you got to get off the field on third down, you got to convert on third down. Guys, back to you. Well, Jake, we all love the herd and Marshall University, but many professors and administrators are urging students to think about studying elsewhere. In fact, imagine to Imagine leaving to study across the world. Sometimes in rural West Virginia, it's difficult for students to imagine the bigger world we live in. Marshall University's study abroad program helps students experience life not just outside of Huntington, but also America. It's not a lot of fun things to do at Marshall, so I think studying abroad will be the best way to go. We encourage our students to go beyond their boundaries and their comfort zones to experience other cultures and other countries. That is the main reason that we sponsor our spring break trips to European countries. The study abroad program offers trips through the fall, winter, and summer semesters. During the spring break this year, students can say goodbye to Miami Beach and say hello to Europe. I think that Studying abroad gives you a good opportunity to interact with people or different people from different countries. I would travel abroad. I would probably travel to Australia. Seems the most interesting. With monthly payments and fundraising, you can bring your friends and family along to help you enjoy your trip. And to learn about the different study abroad programs as well as financial aid opportunities, students may stop by room 320 in Old Main for more information. Well, that's all the time we have today for this mid-fall edition of MU Report. Remember, you can catch our program every two weeks on West Virginia Public Broadcasting. The show will also re-air Monday at 1, but we're always on YouTube, and we're always looking for the news that affects Marshall's community. Our advisor is Dr. Chris Wendell, and you can contact him at swindell at marshall.edu. Again, thanks for watching. I'm Breon Taylor. And I'm Daniel Wright. Have a great day.